You want yours there? Or I'll put them up there for you, whatever you want. Right there, okay? We're going to go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Before I begin, uh, I want to introduce uh, the two people that are here with me. First is Jill Borowicz. She's the Executive Director of Safe, Safe Space of the Treasure Coast. And Detective Ron Wentz, who was the lead investigator on the Jacob Music case, uh, which I'll discuss uh, later in detail. Four homicides in our region have dominated the news in recent days. Sunday night in West Palm Beach, Jessica Lachey Exantis, age 22, was stabbed to death. Monday, Tony Lamar Love, her boyfriend, surrendered to West Palm Beach police and was charged with her murder. Sunday, a 26-year-old nurse from Indian River County, Diane Duvet, was reported missing by her parents. Monday, her body was found in the trunk of her car in a parking lot in Melbourne in Brevard County. Her form, former boyfriend, Michael Jones, 31, of Vero Beach, was arrested in Fort Pierce Monday for a probation violation. Nobody has been charged in that case, and local law enforcement agencies are investigating whether Jones was involved in her murder. Monday morning here in St. Lucie County, Stephen Perduke, age 50, was arguing with his girlfriend, 55-year-old Grace Ann Asenza, at their Spanish Lakes Ridge Riverfront home at Don Quixote Lane when Perduke snapped, to use his own words, and choked Asenza to death, squeezing her neck for approximately five minutes. The St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office arrested him a short time later. He's charged with first degree premeditated murder. Early Sunday morning, a motorist on US-1 in St. Lucie County near the Indian River County line saw a car on fire behind a business on the west side of the road. The car belonged to a Vero Beach resident who had loaned it to 30-year-old Bridget Marie Fetcher Music, who was missing Monday afternoon just before 4 p.m. Detective Pat Ivey spotted a small, dark-colored area on a canal bank northwest of Fort Pierce and discovered the body of Bridget Music in the canal. Her throat had been cut. Monday night, the St. Lucie County Sheriff's detectives arrested Jacob Lee Music, 39 of Fort Pierce, and charged him with first-degree premeditated murder of his estranged wife, Bridget Music. We have also charged Jacob, Jacob Music with setting fire to the car that she was utilizing. All four of these cases have a very common thread, domestic violence, which sadly has become an epidemic in our area. In 2012, in St. Lucie County, there were 1,165 arrests for domestic violence. In 2013, there were 1,208 arrests for domestic violence, and that's more than three per day, every day of the year. In 2014 to, to date, our St. Lucie County has experienced 575 cases of domestic violence. And those are just the cases that result in arrest. We know as law enforcement officers that for every domestic violent arrest, there are many more such cases in which the victims are afraid to report them or there is not enough evidence to make an arrest. Turning to the most recent of the four arrests, that of Jacob Music, he had a documented history of violence toward Bridget Music. We arrested him in 2010 for aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Bridget Music had gone to a North St. Lucie County fire station with her children, saying that she was afraid of Jacob Music and did not want to go home. According to the arrest report, an argument over tattoos escalated into a physical altercation when he grabbed her by the throat, shoved her against the wall twice, and menaced her with a kitchen knife. In the days before his most recent arrest, Jacob Music told several of his friends different accounts of what had happened, but when our detectives interviewed him, he admitted to killing Bridget Music. In the investigation, we were given a folding knife that blade appeared to have hair and blood on it. Our crime lab has not yet analyzed this evidence, but we believe this may be the weapon Jacob Music used to cut Bridget Music's neck before he threw her body into the canal. The truck that Jacob Music was driving the night of his arrest was towed to our compound. 
We are awaiting a search warrant to examine that truck in which we believe we will find additional evidence associated with the crime. We do not plan any additional arrests at this time, even though the case remains under active investigation. As I mentioned, the lead investigator in the case, Detective Ron Wentz, is here with me. He can answer questions uh, concerning that case. I've also invited Jill Borowitz uh, from Safe Space of the Treasure Coast to be with us today. And uh, I want to have her make some comments uh, about this epidemic. Jill? First, I'd like to say thank you very much, Sheriff Mascara, for inviting me to be here today and bring this epidemic to light. My name is Jill Borowitz. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Safe Space. We are the only certified domestic violence center on the Treasure Coast. We are here to serve any victim of domestic violence and their children. I am here today because four women in our community lost their lives at the hands of someone they loved and cared about. All of us at Safe Space are deeply saddened by these horrific murders and our heartfelt condolences go out to their families. Even though we've had this cluster of murders recently, you should know that domestic violence is a pandemic in our community and in our country. One in three women will be, have been, or are victims of domestic violence at some point in their lives. One in three. Four women die every single day in this country at the hands of someone they love. Four women every day. And last year, there were a total of 2,630 domestic violence incidents in the three counties that Safe Space serves, Martin, St. Lucie, and Indian River, as reported by law enforcement. And there were 202 domestic violence murders in the state of Florida. There were actually a total of 108,046 uh, 108, domestic violence incidents reported to law enforcement last year alone. And what we know about domestic violence is that it's only reported in about 50% of the cases. The point here is that while our community has suffered an unfortunate cluster of domestic violence murders recently, the reality is that this is happening every single day here and across the nation. It is important to note that the most dangerous time in the cycle of domestic violence is when a victim leaves. Many people ask me, why doesn't she just leave? I can honestly tell you that victims don't leave because their children, family, and they themselves are threatened with murder if they do leave. Victims believe their abusers and the numbers uphold these fears and beliefs. Domestic violence doesn't happen because of anger, substance abuse, or stress between intimate partners. Domestic violence is an issue that involves one partner in an intimate relationship exerting power and control over the other partner. Some signs that this might be occurring to yourself, family, friends, and things the public should be looking for include intense, unrealistic jealousy, social isolation, family isolation, financial isolation, threats and intimidation, any type of stalking, unexplained injuries, outright injuries that are explained in ways that don't make good sense. Since domestic violence is an issue of power and control, when an abuser realizes they are losing this, they become hyper-focused on regaining this control. The risk of death for victims of domestic violence increases by 75% after she leaves, after the victim leaves. This increased risk is the reason it is so important for victims to seek the assistance of safe space if they are going to leave a domestic violence relationship. Safe Space will help victims with a safe exit plan and help them execute that plan. Safe Space will help in many different types of situations and in many different ways. If you feel unsafe or you think you or your children are in danger, 
We are available to help 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We provide emergency shelter in a confidential location that is protected by law, but we will also provide all of our services on an outreach basis to those who choose not to come into our shelter. Last, if you know someone, know, love, and care about someone who is experiencing any of these signs, or you just have a concern about someone, please reach out and help them get help from Safe Space. You never have to go through this alone. They should never be alone. We are the experts, and we can help. Our statewide hotline number for help is 1-800-500-1119. I'll say that again, 1-800-500-1119 for help today. Thank you very much. We'll uh, collectively, all three of us, will entertain any questions that you have. Wow, good group, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> when you in the Jacob Music, um, right, the Bridget Music, Homicide, I guess, reading the arrest affidavit, it's fairly convoluted. What do you guys, how do you, what do you guys believe were the sequence of events that led up to Bridget Music's death? The sequence of events that led up to Bridget Music's death are still under investigation. There is some information out there that she possibly was attempting to get a divorce from Jacob Music. They had been separated for quite some time, and due to the violence and uh, other things that had occurred, she was trying to just sever ties with him. I mean, but like, I mean, he, there's all this talk about going to Gifford and buying drugs and. Um, a variety of different stories that acquaintances maybe had been told. How do you think her body wound up in that canal? I mean, uh, after she was murdered, her body was dumped in the canal by Mr. Music. Did you know where that homicide happened? Uh, we're not exactly 100% sure on the location. We have two possibilities on the location. The canal bank where where we found her body is one of those possibilities. How the, I'm sorry. The vehicle that was burned was. Was that where she was murdered inside there? Or, or what's the significance of the vehicle that was burned up there on US 1? The significance of the vehicle that was burned on US 1 is that the vehicle was taken up there and burned, we believe, to cover up the evidence, the physical evidence that was in the vehicle. How long do you think it went from when maybe she was killed to when she was reported missing? Or do you think she was reported missing before she was killed? What's the time frame around those two events? Uh, I responded to the scene about 520 AM on Sunday morning to the vehicle fire, and I was in communication with the registered owner of the vehicle at that time. Uh, she was reported missing later on that afternoon to the Indian River County Sheriff's Office because that's where she lived. Uh, we were treating this as suspicious from the get-go because we didn't know where she was. Does uh, Mr. Music have a criminal history of domestic violence in the past? Yes, he does. Do you know how many uh, incidents? Uh, not right off the top of my head, but he, he does with various women, not just Miss Music. In it, I guess in the arrest affidavit I mentioned, I guess he sort of put some of the blame on his his current girlfriend for doing the stabbing. Did you guys basically discount that, or did you give any credence to that, or do uh, you think he was solely responsible for, for the homicide? Yes, you, you asked if Mr. Music was solely responsible. Did he? Yes, he did direct some of the blame towards his girlfriend. Um, we have interviewed his girlfriend. We're not counting out any possibilities, but at this time, it does not appear that she was involved. There was also another theory about um, that he spouted out, which about, about drug dealers involved in this. What about that theory? Yes, uh, Mr. Music gave us the theory that that drug dealers that she owed money to had kidnapped and killed her. Um, we investigated that on Sunday. Um, we were able to make contact with those supposed drug dealers and interview them and able to corroborate their stories, and that incident did not occur that way. And what are you looking for in the, the truck, his truck, with what type of evidence are you looking for? Uh, Mr. Music indicated to us during the interview that his bloody shirt was in the vehicle. And it also mentioned um, that the victim's pants were off and underwear. Was she sexually assaulted prior? Uh, that portion is still under investigation. The murder weapon, is, is that the, the folding knife then? Is, are you believe that's the murder weapon? 
the question you asked was, do I believe the folding knife is a murder weapon? Um, that is the theory at this point. The, what, the knife did have what appeared to be traces of blood and hair on it. Again, we won't know the answer to that until it comes back from the crime lab. And how did you find that knife? Uh, the knife was turned over to us by a witness. In his past domestic violence situations and arrests, was there a, is there a common trigger that leads to his violence or a common motive that we found? Uh, it appears to be the common trigger in his past domestic violence appears to be jealousy and drug use. Do you think that's the same as this, this, this deadly? That, that's how it appears, yes. So well, the, the sheriff mentioned a uh, domestic violence incident in 2010 involving this particular couple. Were there other, how many others were there besides this? And you mentioned other people as well. Uh, n there were other numerous, the numerous other uh, incidents. Uh, there's multiple injunctions that Mr. Music had against him that are currently were not in effect that had been uh, dismissed. Involving more than one. Or yes, one, yes, involving more than one person. Do you know any details about the search for her once she was reported missing? I mean, was there an extensive search for her? Was it, a, you know, all men on the ground kind of looking for her? Or what, what were the details of trying to find her once she was reported missing? Yes, uh, the, the question you asked was, was, was there an extensive search? Absolutely, there was an extensive search. Um, there was a team of detectives out. Uh, we utilized a helicopter, uh, ag deputies on four wheelers things of that nature. Yes, there was an extensive search. And then the, leading you to the canal, um, it sounds like from the report, the arrest report, it was a witness information that led you there, is that right? We already had deputies on four wheelers and on foot in the woods and the canals in that area. And that's what directed us there. We did get some information, yes. That uh, but that's not what directed us there. Was that as a result of the the car that was, that was burned that led, led you gone to that, to that scene, or was there the tip that led you out there to begin with? Uh, again, because of the car being burned in the Lakewood Park area, and Mr. Music was staying in the Lakewood Park area, um, we just started searching the woods and canals for Ms. Music. Um, any idea what will happen to the victim's children? Are they going to be with the building? The victim's children are currently with their fathers. And that, that's not something that is in our hands. Can you comment, maybe the sheriff can comment, on the justice system in a way, is there a hole, is there a gap? There are so many issues that happen with domestic violence. Jill might be better to comment on that because you probably see the cycle, don't you? People get arrested, they get let back out. There are you know, still cases that haven't been properly determined. I mean, what's the next step? This is an ongoing problem all over the state, all over the country. It is. I, I can give you my best opinion um, based on my experiences. And that is, I, I do believe that first and foremost, we have to hold batterers accountable. Um, and that has to be done through the justice system um, laws, I think, have changed over time, um, but it's going to take more time uh, to get to the place that we need to get to so that they will be truly held accountable. I think there's been a lot of talk about a tracking system, a monitoring, a statewide monitoring system for offenders that move around the state and they re-violate and re-offend, re-abuse. Um, so, you know, it, it, it really is, uh, that we need a systemic change in Florida in terms of holding batterers accountable. How many um, people, how many men and women, or is it going to take that you know die? That's, that's a really happened. good question, and I wish I could answer that. And I have to tell you, I ask that question every single time that a domestic violence homicide occurs. Um, you know, it's. It really is an issue that involves each and every one of us. I know that this has often been called a women's issue. It is not a woman's issue. Um, it requires men, policing men. Um, it requires family stepping up when it's hard. You know, it's not easy to say, you need help, and I'm going to get you there. Um, but it could save someone's life. And that's why, as an organization, uh, Safe Space has been out and really trying to let everyone we 
we can know that we're here for them um, and that they're protected by law. We have privileged communication um, with our participants, with any victims that we work with. We are prohibited by law. We have the same kind of uh, protection as an attorney has with their client, with our with our the victims that come to us for service. So they're very very safe. Their information is protected, um, you know, and and really the best possible way for a victim and children to leave a a dangerous situation is with our help. We know how to get them out safely. Um, women who try to leave on their own without the support of family or friends or safe space um, are at grave risk, grave risk. And abusers are deadly serious. They mean it. When they say, <laughs> you know, I'm going to kill you, your children, your family, I mean, our, our, the victims believe that. So, uh, you know, I know that's kind of a long-winded answer to your question, but it really does mean that everybody has to change, including the media guys. I mean, you have to remember that these are victims of a crime, these women. And I see a lot of times in the paper things like, you know, she was using drugs. Well, her drug abuse has nothing to do with her death whatsoever. I mean, she was murdered. This woman was murdered because this man chose to murder her. Not because she was using drugs. And I think it's really important, and I implore you as members of the media community to be very careful about not re-victimizing victims because it keeps them from coming forward when they desperately need help. So, anyway, thank you. Thanks. I have a question for Jalosa. You said that a lot of times women fear for their lives so they don't report. I also heard that sometimes they actually get used to being battered is that true also? And they kind of, kind of comes a part of their life, so they don't report it. Well, what I would say to you is uh, many, many women, not all um, women, uh, you know, were, grew up in homes, violent homes. Um, oftentimes there's child abuse uh, and domestic violence, um, and it's multi-generational. And so if you've lived in that kind of environment for many, many years, yeah, I could see you seeing that as being normal. But there are also a large group of women who don't see it as being normal, even those who have grown up that way. So, um, you know, I think we, when things like this happen that are tragic and awful, we want answers. We want to know why. And there is no clean, neat answer here. These cases are very, as Sheriff Mascara can attest to, and I'm sure as detectives, these are very complex cases, and each one is different in its own way, and you cannot fit these victims into a square box. They aren't all the same. They're all different. They all respond differently. Um, I have heard women say, you know, sometimes they'll come to us and they make the choice to return. And by the way, the national statistic for returning is it takes uh, the average woman seven times to leave before she's finally done with a relationship, okay? And there are lots of reasons for that. Religion, uh, family, finances, but you know, I've heard women in our facility say, I have to go back, I have nowhere else except the woods to go to. And she has a couple kids with her. Um, I'd much rather, I'll, you know, put up with what's going on at home if I know my children have food in their bellies and a roof over their heads. Many times it's women with children. Um, you know, there aren't a lot of resources in our community. We're kind of small, so. Are feelings one of them, too? Feelings? Yeah, because they miss the person. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you've ever been through a breakup, you know that it's difficult to let them go. Yeah, no matter what. No matter what. And the dream is always there. The dream of a happy marriage and a happy family and being able to create that. Nobody loses that. Have you ever heard of the men actually changing? They were, you know, you know, abusing their wife or loved one, and then they actually stopped. They became a better person. Is that very rare? I really, honestly, cannot answer. I don't know. I don't know. I would tell you this. I don't know many uh, areas of life, uh, with the exception of maybe one that I'm thinking of, pedophilia, where you know, absolutely, you can't change. I think if you really, really want to change, you can. Yeah. And there are programs in the state of Florida, there are betters intervention programs out there, and there are vip, uh, those kind of programs here locally. Um, I guess I might have a question for the detective, 
be, um, I guess Bridget's dad told one of my colleagues that she tried to break it off with him in Milton recently. Yes. And um, I guess he basically came over here to get her. That's the way she's phrasing it. Can you elaborate on that or basically what's up with that? Well, Mr. Music is from this community. Milton? No, he, okay. here in, in St. Lucie County. Um, he bounces around quite a bit. Um, yes, he did go to Milton. She, she went to Milton. He went to Milton. And then he came back, and then she ended up coming back. Oh, so she followed him back? Pretty much, yes. Like, just coincidentally, or because she was trying to patch things up, or? Uh, again, I don't know. The, the person that would be able to answer that question is deceased. Do you know how long, the time frame of when they both went to Milton and came back? Was that like two months ago, or two weeks ago, or? Uh, no, I do not know that time frame. Question. Um, in the uh, arrest documents, yeah, Jacob Music seemed like he was, I, I don't know, it seems like he was repeating himself. I read that a couple times and that he was kind of making some really outlandish claims. Did it appear that he was under any sort of substance at the time? It, it did not appear that Mr. Music was under the influence of alcohol or drugs at the time. Uh, Mr. Jacob Music is a very controlling person. Um, and control is, is something that is interjected into most domestic violence cases. Um, and that appears to be the, the main issue. Excuse me. What was, he, what was he like? Uh, he, he knew that we were looking for him. Um, he actually had gone around Monday and told a lot of people in the community that he was going to go to jail for murder. Um, he was hiding out at the Quality Inn. It sounds like also he, there were some outbursts as you were interviewing him. Yeah. Yes. Many, many outbursts. Um, he was when he would get confronted with discrepancies in his story, he'd get very angry at us. Um, at one point, he actually asked me to leave the room. So was he volatile in, in it, or was he calm, or what was his emotional state during the uh, interview process? His emotional state during the interview process was calm at first, then a little emotional, and then very volatile. Actually jumped out of the chair several times. Can you explain his confession? Excuse me? Can you explain his confession? Did he confess? Yes, he did confess. Um, he said, you're damn right I killed her. Did you say why? Uh, he, he went into to many different variations of why. Again, in the arrest affidavit, you could see that he indicated that he was not alone. He indicated that his girl, current girlfriend helped him. Um, again, that's still an investigation, but we, we have pretty much uh, found out through witnesses and such that that did not occur. Who was the last person to see Bridget Music alive? Uh, Jacob Music. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, she was with her son's father and his fiance at 11.30 p.m. on Saturday night. And then that's when they took her to buy drugs and give her? It, it, it was earlier than that, but yes, that was uh, at 11.30 p.m. she left their house and that's the last time she was seen alive. Okay. Can, we, can I ask a little bit about the, um, the uh, Joseph, or excuse me, the um, Grace Anna Senza on the It's a Spanish, Spanish lights one, yes. Yeah. Do you, do, you, um, do you know anything about their history, Stephen Perduck or Purdue and Grace Asenza, like whether they had any domestic issues or? We actually have the lead investigator on that, don't we? No? He's not in the room. He's not in the room? Okay. Uh, is he outside? We'll look for him. To the best of my knowledge, I do not believe there was any past uh, domestic violence issues. Okay, do you know anything, I've tried to just kind of, do you, do you know anything about their personal lives before the homicide or? I do not. I do not. I'll we'll try to find the detective. Have... Go ahead. Um, just before the investigator comes in on that, um, what's next in the Jacob Music investigation? Where does that stand? Where does the rest stand? I'll repeat the question. What's next in the, in the music investigation is that Again, the state attorney's on board, so the judicial process is going to take over part of it. Um, we still have a lot of leads, information. We're getting phone calls every minute, um, people wanting to give us information. So there's a lot of ancillary investigation that's going on right now, uh, neighborhood canvases, uh, trying to retrieve videos from stores, things of that nature. What are the main questions? What are the main holes you're still trying to fill? 
is the main question that you're still trying to learn to the investigation? Uh, exactly where he met up with her that night. Why he met up with her that night. Um, things of that nature. What about motive? Any idea what he claims his motive was? Uh, he it was very adamant. That he claimed, that you asked what the motive was. Um, Jacob Music claims that he was very jealous of her, that he found out that she had been sleeping with someone else, and also there, there are some other things that are still under investigation. Any idea what his childhood was like? Did he experience abuse growing up in his house? Or? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. Does, it, does the uh, motivation have anything to do with drugs, purchasing drugs, money? Uh, does it does the motivation have to do with purchasing drugs or money it does not appear so um, everyone involved in this has a, a drug history and is a drug user and the argument over the tattoos was the 2010 arrest correct <clears throat> yes that? correct this is detective Troy Norman the lead investigator in the Spanish Lakes Riverfront homicide and was that you will I, I was just trying to uh, uh, determine whether you guys had um, found out if there was any kind of prior domestic uh, history involving Steve Burduk and or Burduk and Grace Asenza. Like, you know, if you guys had been out there before for domestic issues or any problems or. From what we understand from neighbors is that they argued a lot. Um, nothing, nothing of violence that they knew of, but there were some times where they were arguing back and forth. But nothing necessarily out of the ordinary or that rose to the level that they might have called 911 or anything like that? Nothing that we saw initially, no, sir. Okay. Do you know anything about their personal lives, like, in the months prior to the, this killing? Like, what was going on with them, whether there was financial pressures in the household or um, anything else going on or allegations of infidelity or, you know what I mean, <coughs> anything to try to paint a picture of what was going on in the months before this happened? From what we got through your interview um, was that she was pressuring him to get a job. Uh, he just recently moved in with her from New Mexico, and she was pressuring him to get a job, go out, work, try to do something besides being on the couch watching TV. Now, I guess moved here from New Mexico. Was he incarcerated in New yes, Mexico? Sir. He was in jail? Yes, sir. He was, he was incarcerated in New, New Mexico. What was... It was a battery on a mental health worker case out there. I don't know nothing of the case. I just saw the criminal history. Um, but they were together prior to prior to his arrest and going you know, up to New Mexico. Meeting or? Approximately five years. And do you know how they met? Or? At, uh, I believe he said AA. Alcoholics Anonymous. Yes, sir. Okay, that's all the questions. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thank you all for being here.